Hey, this is Phyllis. Um, I just got home about an hour ago. Um, I had um, sinus surgery this morning. Uh, I had been having a problem with uh, pain um, across here, a lot of pressure through here. Uh, I had a problem breathing through my nose, and uh, my biggest complaint was I was having um, my ears were ringing really, really uh, terribly, which is called tinnitus. And um, uh, I had seen probably uh, at least six um, other ear doctors and one allergist, and uh, all the ear doctors were saying that um, my problem with the ringing in the ears was uh, being caused by um, uh, some hearing loss. You know, if you can believe that, I never believed it. And uh, nobody ever bothered to do a CT scan or, you know, really look into it um, further. I finally found a good Christian doctor uh, a few months ago, and uh, he did do the CT scan. He did some allergy testing. Uh, the allergy testing, he could visually see in my throat and in my ears, he could see uh, inflammation. And the allergy testing said uh, or showed that I was allergic to the uh candida albicans uh which is like canadian yeast uh except it turned into a fungal uh infection so i just had all this uh, uh candida um fungus just uh, all through my sinus areas um that was caused by taking uh antibiotics in the past um steroids like prednisone I uh, also had uh, a bladder cancer tumor removed about three years ago, and they gave me uh, a, a, they put like a, a chemo uh, drug inside the bladder for about 30 minutes, which was supposed to have no side effects, but that's what actually triggered all this sinus problems. It was like I was having an allergic reaction to it, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And uh, I got to the point that, you know, I was having a lot of bad headaches and a lot of sinus pressure sure um that developed into it was causing this fungus uh, in my sinus was causing so many blockages through my sinus passages that it was causing me to have eustachian uh dysfunction which was causing my ears to ring like crazy i couldn't walk from uh my house to the end of my driveway and my ears wouldn't change pressure um I did have one doctor who actually was trying to help me. He put some ear uh, ventilation tubes in like uh, like the babies get. And um, I saw um, five or six other ear doctors who just absolutely had no desire to help anybody under this new Obama governmental health care. And they would just say that the ringing in the ears or the tinnitus or tinnitus as it's sometimes called, they said that was just being called by, caused by, uh, you know, a little bit of hearing loss. You know, if you can believe that, I never believed it, because I do a lot of uh, research on my own. Because you know, so many doctors, like I say now, they just absolutely don't have any desire to help anybody. And so, um, uh, about two months ago, I found a really good Christian man uh, on the internet as I was um, doing some research on the eustachian uh, tube balloon dilation uh, procedure that just came out of trial study in January of 17 and uh, I went to the doctor and discussed that with him and he said well first uh, let him see if he could get this um, inflammation you know under control because uh, he could visually as I was saying he could visually see the inflammation in the ears uh, and the throat uh, my tongue was staying swollen it was that, that fungus was, was pretty bad it had really completely gotten out of control uh, he had me on some really good medicines and one of the antifungal medicines the second round he was trying me on uh, it was helping uh, but I had a allergic reaction to it about seven days after I started taking it so we had to get me off of that and the next step was to do um, I thought it was going to be just the simple sinuplasty but where I had all this uh, inflammation and all that wasn't going to be feasible so he did what was called the uh, frontal uh, into I'm sorry functional endoscopic uh, sinus surgery uh, he did the terminate reduction and also another procedure that was included in this was called the uh, frontal um, 
recess uh, exploration, which is uh, my thumb's getting in the way. Uh, that's actually uh, up in this area. Uh, he took care of the, um, the sinuses, you know, here in the frontal, uh, right here in in between the nose, right here on uh, the these sinus areas, and it's uh, another sinus area. I cannot pronounce all these sinus areas. Kind of through here, and um, uh, what he did, he uh, just kind of removed a small amount of skin that from a turbinate to help that open because like when I would uh, lay on my side at night I could actually feel something like it was closing completely up and I was having trouble breathing not only when I slept uh, but also when I was awake and it was making me snore like crazy people couldn't even be in the house with me it was actually causing me to have sleep acne because I was waking up you know like every uh, 45 minutes to every hour so I was, you know, completely exhausted. But um, uh, he went in, you know, today. I, I didn't have any pain for anyone that's, you know, uh, looking to have this done. It, it wasn't really painful. He used a lot of gels and sprays to numb the nose. And he uh, went in with a needle and had to numb that two separate times, which uh, the nose area was so numb I didn't feel the needle. But now when he uh, finally went in, the last thing he did to do the... Um, the balloon inflation uh, to inflate these areas. Now, that that was um, uh, it, it, it was kind of uncomfortable. It was very tolerated. I did this through the you know through the office, but uh, it, it was kind of painful because it was so much pressure. I mean, I felt like my nose was just gonna break, and I'm like, you know, are you gonna break my nose? <laughs> But it, it was a lot, of, it was just a lot of pressure. And um, everything, you know, went well. Like I said, I hadn't been home about an hour. I'm outside, I wanna go do something. Um, um, they, they just don't want me to uh, be bending over, be lifting or straining. Um, I, I talked to, you know, one lady that was in the office and I told her what I was having doing while I was waiting. And she said she had it done. She had absolutely no pain. And I'm like, gosh, she must have been the strongest woman on it face of this earth because like I said I thought it was kind of you know painful when that that balloon kind of started inflating it and like I said it was putting so much pressure against my nose it just kind of you know yeah that's kind of a tender area but uh when he got through my nose was you know really sore and uh but 30 minutes later uh all that's gone away I had drainage and was holding a paper towel up to my nose for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and you know kept just sort of patting that area because there was some you know light blood not a lot just just enough to be aggravating and um everything's been uh going good for me i've got a follow-up in another week and uh we're really hoping that this will take care of the uh especially the ringing in the ears that was my biggest complaint because he was showing me that there was some you know blockages there uh, and I'm hoping that those places were open, and I'm hoping that I don't have to have the Eustachian um, balloon dilation procedure. I'm hoping that this will take care of it, but it wouldn't surprise me if I, you know, don't have to go ahead and have the balloon dilation uh, um, procedure for the Eustachian tube because if there's so much inflammation, what we looked at on the CT scan, uh, I would assume, you know, it, it's there in the um, Eustachian tube as well which like I said, I'm hoping that this will get everything, let everything drain and then kind of unblock those um, tubes. Uh, so anybody that's looking to have this kind of surgery, um, I researched it to death and found all these horror stories on uh, you know Google, especially on YouTube. I'm sorry for those that you know had a lot of problems, but I didn't. Like I said, most people I think go home and go to sleep, and, but you know I'm not sleepy. Um, I was disappointed. I was offered on uh, Xanax um, right right before I was supposed to take like 0.5 milligrams. Um, before uh, I went to the office an hour before then take one when I got there and the company I got this at CVS the medicine and I did research and the company that makes this medicine is having to pay the United States uh, they're an overseas company and having to pay the United States 11 million dollars because they defrauded the government by cutting the medicines uh, strength in half and that's the way that that I felt this morning because anybody's ever taken the brand name Xanax you can take like 0.25 which is half of you know the point you know 50 
and uh, you know you'll be feeling like uh like you're getting a little buzz and i mean i felt absolutely nothing even t taking in you know what was one full milligram i felt absolutely nothing like i hadn't even taken a pill um so the pain pill i'm taking is the hydro cortisone something like it i don't know it's the one that's got the uh tylenol in it. it's equivalent to the you know the vicodin it's a real low dose and like i said my nose did hurt right after he just you know finished up those areas it hurt right then and like i said i took a pain pill before i left and 30 minutes later i don't have any pain i'm outside looking for something to do i'm not supposed to do anything i'm not supposed to be bending over lifting anything but you know, I'm, I'm really bored i'm not sleepy or anything i'm just looking for something to do today might take my four-wheeler out and ride it and so i just you know wanted to make this video because there's just been so many horror stories um on, on youtube and I'm really my heart goes out to the people that have had problems but each situation is different so um if you've had a problem with ringing in the ears um it, it is worth um you know really praying about it and you know like i said my doctor was a good christian man um we prayed together before you know he got started and while he was doing the work we were listening to some low uh relaxing music we were basically talking about some of the funnier bible stories of you know how silly <laughs> some of the people acted back then instead of following god's instructions they always wanted to go off on and do whatever they wanted to do and then end up in a mess but everything went good and you know i'm feeling good and uh, i'm breathing a whole lot better now i'm still kind of stopped up from where i've got a you know a lot of i guess blood <laughs> still it looked like it kind of packed in my nose uh and um that plus you know there's some swelling and all inside so it should take a you know at least at least two days for the swelling to come down but um no i, I feel really good i don't have a headache i'm not tired and uh so i just wanted to you know let anybody know that's looking at this to know that you know it should go you know really well and like i said you should always pray about you know the situation and pray about being led to to the right doctor because you right doctor you know that 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 means everything somebody that's had the experience that you know does allow the holy spirit to um you know lead them and, and you know in what they're doing and have the confidence that the lord is you know gonna you know make sure that everything's right no complications or anything so um god bless each and every one of you in your uh recovery and i'll do a follow-up video up in about a week and you know after everything calms down get settled down in my ears let you know how my uh ears turned out if they quit ringing i'm praying that they do praying i don't have to have that eustachian tube uh balloon dilation procedure i'm hoping this will all take care of it because i did have a lot of blockages that like i said the other doctors just completely you know ignored and blew off and just said it was nothing could be done and so i uh, just want to wish everyone uh uh you know good luck and god bless